What's your middle name? Jean. Robert. G-E-N-E. Jean -E. Jean Moore. Yeah. yeah. All right, Robert Jean Moore, you have done very well for yourself. I feel like there's a lot of wisdom coming off of you in, in your 90 years. If so there I'm gonna is, pick I got your brain. it from somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, we'll just keep paying it forward. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is your office, and wow, it is just chock full of all kinds of memorabilia from your life. Do you have a favorite thing? Oh, I think probably I lost my wife about a year ago. We've had 66 years of wonderful marriage and three sons and I've been awfully lucky and she helped me build the building or the business, I'm sorry. But and but she also inspired the business by her care of how we fed our family and and those became very important things in our life and one thing led to another. When I read about the two of you and the history of not only the business but your marriage, 66 years, can you tell me about her? It sounds like a beautiful love story. Well, she's a lovely lady. We worked together at a company called U.S. Electrical Motors. And I got out of the service and I had three years of education on the government. And uh, uh, so I went to work for U.S. Motors at night and went to school during the day. And I did that for three years. And she worked days and I worked nights. And throughout this three year period, uh, others thought that we should get together. So we had a blind date with another couple. And uh, it went okay. My mother said, well, uh, how, how, how was the girl you were with last night? And I said, I don't know, mom. She's so quiet, I'm gonna have to take her out again. <laughs> and obviously I did. And uh, it, we, we ha we've had a very precious, life we've done a lot of things together so i've i've had the feeling of success and i've had the feeling of just total failure losing everything and i don't know that it did me any worse or any good but if you fail pick yourself up and go on because that's the only way to do it and Resilience. i guess i've had that experience mm. but charlie of course was always with me her incidentally her name charlie uh they're in an old english uh, family and the firstborn was always named Charles well but she was a girl <laughs> so her parents named her Charlie uh, I it was it always it tickled me and have you met the have you met Chuck yet no I haven't who's who's Chuck the, the lady named Charles <laughs> That's a good story. and so uh, it's been a, a, a very fun thing in our life to, what would you say are the secrets to a good, long-lasting marriage? You'd think I'd have a good answer for that, wouldn't you? Oh, of course, you just have to have that deep, intrinsic love for someone that kind of overcomes the difficulties and the parts that don't go together so well. But I didn't have a lot of those. Charlie was a very easy uh, person to live with and uh, uh, I, I don't know, we didn't have a lot of trouble. And the biggest thing was, is I was so filled with energy and, and desire to be a success in some kind of business. And she's just always helping, helping me. I had a lot of respect for her. Uh, she believed things, uh, benevolent things that were important in the world and, uh, and she imparted those things to me and that's made a lot of difference in my life. I really see her influence all the way through my life. I think that's good. I mean, uh, I, I, I live in a big house that we built together, designed together, and it's just got tons. You think this is full of stuff. You should see my house. Wow. And uh, there's so many bits and pieces of memorabilia between us and our families and stuff that I just, just I think just a couple nights ago, I spent some time walking around just looking at things and, and, and looking at memories of things we did together. And, um, it was pretty cool. And uh, we had some very strong feelings about the world and, and what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing. 
and we shared those. And if you find yourself in a relationship where you have those things, you're very blessed. And I feel very blessed, still feel very blessed. I can't imagine. I remember losing my mom and my dad. Yeah. Um, so I was in my 40s. Yes. So that's, you know, 40 years of knowing somebody. Right. You were married for 66 years. How are you doing? How am I doing now? Yeah. Oh, uh, I finally, after a couple, three months, I went to my doctor and I couldn't sleep and stuff. And he gave me some pills for uh, depression. I, I couldn't get past it. And so I don't know what the pills are, but I've been on them six months, seven months, and they help a lot. So there is something out there in a, in a uh, uh, physical way that can help, and it helps me sleep better. I read a lot. I just read all the time. My kind of rule in life is that if it's happened, I want to read about it. I don't care what it is. Yeah. I got books on everything. Reading, um, you've got a beautiful family, you've got your three sons, but is there anything else that you can share with me about moving through grief? Because it's not just a beginning and an end. It is a process that's ongoing, but can you speak to that at all? What helped you or what helped? Well, it's kind of hard for me because I was kind of in the middle of it. I'm not over it. I mean, no. I don't, I don't even want to be over it. Honest, I don't. The doctor told me that we probably were going to lose her this particular day, a couple of days from when he was saying that. And uh, he was right. She just simply passed in the night. The next morning, we had uh, hospice people came, which all was planned, and uh, they took her rings off and uh, handed them to me. And we have a lovely cabinet, an oval-shaped cabinet with shelves, glass shelves, and it's got all our lives and things like that. People should keep that kind of thing. Her family, my family, her hair when she was a little girl. <laughs> and all kinds of things like that. And I took her rings and my ring, I took my ring off. And I put them on the top shelf right in the center together while she was still in the house. And I look at those things a lot. Um, you still have to live it. I live it every day. It's, I get in and out of moments, you know, and I walk around, and that's why I'm so happy I have a house and even this. This is all part of it. She helped me build the business. There's a picture right there, lovely picture. Do you feel her, though? Oh, yeah. I've talked to a lot of people who oh, say that they feel... I, I particularly felt her, I think it was the night before last, it was not last night, it was the night before last, and I was pulling the blinds in the house, and I looked at this cabinet, and I started looking at the pictures, and and I had no, just this is good. These are good things. I'm talking about good things, not sad things. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm 90. I'm 90 and a half actually, and uh, she was a year older than me. So she, you know, she was 91, almost almost 91 when she passed. I don't know. If something is inevitable, and it certainly is, you, you just have to make the best of it and live it. I have a lot of little sayings that, that I've uh, put into my life that help me get through it. But don't shy away from the reality of uh, having a long life with someone you love. Don't shy away from it. I don't think there's any need to, and I haven't. So here I am. Well said. Thank you for sharing really. that. Thanks for asking that. I, I appreciate being able to express those things. You're nobody till somebody loves you. Oh my gosh, I felt sick. You're nobody till somebody cares. <laughs> You may be king, you may possess the world and all its gold, but gold won't bring you happiness, 
when you're growing old. 